This conference will now be recorded. All right. Sammy, you ready? All right. I now call this meeting of the Bellevue Planning Commission to order. It is de December 17th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Begin with a roll call. Mr. Casey? Present. Mr. Perrin? Here. Ms. Kane? Ms. Kane, you have to unmute yourself. I'm going to mark you as present, Ms. Kane. Mr. Arney? Present. Mr. Ritz? Present. Mr. Ackley? Here. Mr. Hankins? Present. Ms. Cutsforth? Present. Mr. Jacobson. Present. This meeting will be conducted in accordance with the Open Meetings Act, a copy of which can be found in the website of Bellevue. Uh, and pursu pursuant to the governor's executive order 20-36, said meeting may be held via teleconference, telephone conference, or by conferencing by other electronic means. As such, said meeting will be a, by a virtual meeting and the public may join using Facebook Live via the City of Bellevue's Facebook page. For those unable to access Facebook Live, please contact the Community Relations Department. At this time, I would entertain a motion to approve, to approve minutes of the November 19th, 2020 regular meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the November meeting. Second Casey, that. Second. Motion by Cusforth, second by Casey. Mr. Casey, your vote. Um, Mr. Perrin, it's okay. I read your lips. It's okay. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Perrin, Ms. King, Ms. King, I believe you're still muted. Is your mic turned up, Ms. Kane? Ms. Kane, I see that your mic is on. If you could uh, just say yes or no, or one, two, three for us, please. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, now your mic is live, so if you just want to hit the yeah. green mic, go and mute yourself. Bottom of the screen. Thank Mr. you. Arnie? I'm going to abstain because I was not at that meeting. Okay. Mr. Ritz? Uh, yes. Mr. Ackley? Yes. Mr. Hankins? Yes. Ms. Cutsforth? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Well, it's staying since I did not attend. Motion carry, one abstain, Mr. Arney. Uh, Mr. Jacobson also abstained. Thank you. Oh, I apologize. Two abstained, Mr. Arney and Mr. Jacobson. Thank you, Eric. I'd, I'll entertain a motion to accept into record all staff reports, attachments, memos, and handouts regarding each application. Staff, any updates? 
Yes, Mr. Chair, um, one update. Staff did get a phone call from a Mr. Daniel Lowe. Mr. Lowe uh, called in regards to public hearing item 3A tonight on our agenda. He wanted to pass along and wanted us to state for the record he is fine with the rezoning request for Mr. Dennis Schwar. He stated his only opposition would be in regards to improving Cary Street uh, from South Ninth Street to the West. Otherwise, he was in favor of the rezoning. So I would add that for the record for item 3A. All right. Mr. Chair, if I might make a motion. To accept into record staff reports, attachments, memos, and handouts regarding each application, as well as the update by Ms. Pong. Motion by Jacobson. Second. Second. Second by Cutsforth. Mr. Casey? Your vote? Yes. Mr. Perrin? Yes. Ms. Kane? <laughs> Ms. Kane, try it again. Maybe get closer to your mic. I'm going to move forward. Ms. Kane, just keep trying to say yes or make your vote, please. Mr. Arnie? Yes. Mr. Ritz? Yes. Mr. Ackley? Yes. Mr. Hankins? Yes. Ms. Cutsforth? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Ms. Kane, let's try again. Second. Second. I think that, that was a yes. <laughs> I'll vote it yes. Motion carried. <clears throat> now move into the public hearings. After I read in each item into record, I will ask the applicant to present, or I will ask the city to present the item, ask the applicant if they are present, if they wish to speak about it. Then I will open it up to public hearing. I reserve the right to limit testimony from uh, three to five minutes based on number of people that wish to speak. When you do speak, please state your name and address clearly for the record. Once again, it's this, as always, this is governed by the Golden Rule. Treat others as you want them to treat you. Item 3A, request to rezone Lot 2, Bellevue Business Park, Replat 6, from AG to FX for the purpose of flex development. Applicant Dennis Schower, LLC, General Location, 10th Street and Alberta Avenue, Case number Z-2010-16, staff, do you want to elaborate on this one? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Shore is requesting a change of zone on a vacant piece of property that he has that is currently zoned BGH, Heavy General Business. He would like to have it zoned uh, FX for flex zoning. Uh, previously, back in 2004, uh, the City Council did approve on that property, Mr. Schwar, to have a conditional use permit for an auto body facility. Um, he never did develop the auto body facility and is now requesting instead to have the change of the flex zoning. Um, currently, to the east of that property, there is uh, light manufacturing zoning. To the west is acreages and residential estates, larger acreage, uh, single family residential lots. Staff believes that um, given that Mr. Schwar currently has a conditional use on the property in which he could put a light industrial business on there, 
um, the flex zoning is appropriate. It would create a buffer in between the existing light manufacturing zoning that is there and the larger acreage lots that are to the west. Um, I don't believe the applicant is on this evening, so if there are any questions, I can do my best to answer those from the public and also from the commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if the applicant joins later, I will default to them. But in the meantime, I'm going to open this up to public hearing. Is there anyone on the call that wishes to call for or against this item? No. No. All right. Seeing no one on the call for this item, move this to closing the public hearing, moving it to the commissioners. Commissioners, what are your wishes? Oh, if nobody, uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion. One second. Somebody... Uh, Mr. Arnie, did you have something you wanted to say? I, saw, I just saw your hand up. Sorry. I just want to understand, Tammy, the, the citizen that sent the email in, was it was it Ninth Street or the north or the south side he was concerned about extending or not extending? He was concerned about Cary Street on the north side. He does not want it to extend, is that what he's saying? He does not want to see it improved, correct. Um, there is currently right of way there. It's unimproved right away. His desire was that it be left unimproved. And are we okay with that as a city? No, we are not. Um, eventually when develop comes in, um, it's the intent of the city that Cary Street will be improved. Like I said, there is platted right of way there. Um, that was always meant to go through. So again, it just depends on what happens with the development in the area. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ms. Palm, um, has the, uh, has Mr. Shore, I know that Flex Development can include a lot of different types of uh, businesses and so forth in that zoning. Has he given any indication of what type of development under those guidelines um, for acceptable permitted uses he is pursuing? No, um, it's my understanding that currently he desires to market the property. Uh, he desires the mix of the heavy commercial with some of the light industrial uses, um, but he has not given me any indication um, that of, of what types of uses that he would specifically like in that, that property. Okay, now if there's uh, no further discussion, I'm uh, prepared to make a motion uh, to uh, for approval based on conformance with the zoning ordinance and lack of perceived negative impact upon the surrounding areas. And then uh, in addition to that motion to amend the future land map uh, to reflect the flex zoning. Second. Who said second? Okay, Sorry. motion by Casey, second by Perrin. Mr. Casey? Yes. Mr. Perrin? Yes. Ms. Kane? And again, we're going to move forward, Ms. Kane, until you can um, speak and we can hear you. Mr. Arney? Yes. Mr. Ritz? Yes. Mr. Ackley? Yes. Mr. Hankins? Yes. Ms. Cutsford? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Ms. Kane, would you like to try again, please? Yes. Got it. 
I'll vote it yes. Motion carried. This item will go in front of the City Council on Tuesday, February 2nd. Going on to item 3B, request to rezone lots 1 through 263 and outlots A through D. Alta Colina being a platting of the south half of the northeast quarter of Section 7, Township 13N, R13E of the 6th Prime Meridian, Sarpy County, Nebraska, from AG to RS-72 and RD-60, for the purpose of single family residential development and preliminary plat lots one through 263 and out lots A through D, Alta Colina. Applicant, Orchard Valley, Inc. Location, South 48th Street, south of Cape Heart Road. Case numbers, Z-2009-12 and S-2009-20. Staff, would you like to present this item? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a request to rezone and preliminary plat a small or single family residential neighborhood just south of 48th Street and Cape Heart Road. Um, this would be 263 lots. The majority of the subdivision would be zoned RS-72, which is a typical medium density residential lot. There would also be some lots that were zoned RD-60, be just a bit smaller, that would allow for a townhome type construction. This request is very similar to what is currently existing in the area and also what is being constructed. Um, it mirrors the neighborhood to the north, and it also has very similar characteristics to other neighborhoods to the east. Um, Mr. Sudbeck in his application is providing uh, trails throughout the neighborhood. Uh, he is also providing a trail connection to an existing park to the north in Falcon Point. When this area developed, it was always staff's intent that there would be a larger park area that would serve uh, multiple neighborhoods. So Mr. Sudbeck will be collaborating uh, financially with the Falcon Point Sanitary and Improvement District on the park in regards to getting it developed. Uh, in addition to uh, my staff report, I do have an update. When we did the staff report last week, there were some technical deficiencies in the engineering arena. Those have all been satisfied. Um, and at this point, staff would update our recommendation to include approval of this rezoning and preliminary plat request. Approval would be based on conformance to the zoning ordinance, the comprehensive plan, um, and our subdivision regulations. And I should point out that the comprehensive plan does show this area as medium density residential. So this is in line with the comprehensive plan. Other than that, we can go ahead and move forward with the public hearing and we can take questions from there. Thank you. Is the applicant on the call tonight? Yes, yes they are. are. Mr. Sudbeck is here. I'm Robert Peterson, the attorney. And I think Tammy's pretty well laid out. Uh, I don't wanna be redundant. This is going to be uh, developed in two phases. Um, it's anticipated when we get full build out, which which we hope to complete uh, within five to six years, of uh, 100 and roughly 102 million dollars in valuation. Uh, Mr. Sudbeck's a you know a seasoned, experienced developer, and uh, I guess we're here for any questions. I just don't want to repeat what Timmy's already said. All right. Thank you very much. I'm now gonna open it to public hearing. Uh, is there anyone else on the call that wishes to speak on the record for or against this item? We do have some Facebook Live questions, I believe. Yeah, Tammy, uh, this is Phil. We have a couple Facebook Live questions. Both uh, wanted to know, Christina and Trisha, both wanted to know if this was, has to do with Lionsgate. And Trisha wanted to know how the green belt status of Lionsgate would be affected by this. 
So this neighborhood would be to the north of Lionsgate. It would be in between the current Falcon Point subdivision and Lionsgate. Um, Lionsgate is a sanitary and improvement district. It's being, it's currently being developed. So as such, it would no longer have green belt status. I think there's a couple more questions, Mr. Ritz. So we'll give uh, Facebook a minute to catch up. Okay, a um, Facebook watcher named Michelle Andell asked, what is the traffic flow plan? And is 48th Street the only access street to the neighborhood? So there are several connections which will be made. Um, there will be two access points to South 48th Street. Um, there will be collector streets. Uh, Looking Glass Drive will be an east-west collector street. Um, also Pine Hill Road. It will also have a north-south collector street, South 52nd Street, which will connect to the north through Falcon Point. That will provide a connection to Cape Heart Road. It will also connect um, through Lionsgate at South 51st Street. It will also have two connections that uh, future sub outs that go to the west. So someday when development happens to the west, we will have two east-west collectors that go through at that location as well. I should point out there's two other north south connections that will be made through the Falcon Point subdivision. Those will happen at South 55th Street and also South 49th Street. So those are the access points that are being proposed. Okay, you have uh, three questions from Christina. Okay. Um, the first one is, what are the types of homes? What are the price of homes? And she's also asking, will the green belt status remain? So I can answer the question on to the green belt status. Um, I'll defer to Mr. Sudbeck or Mr. Peterson to speak specifically to the home construction. Um, once a property develops, it will no longer have green belt. Um, this property is proposed to be a sanitary and improvement district, which is similar to the other neighborhoods in the area. Um, Mr. Peterson or Mr. Sudbeck, I don't know if you want to speak in regards to specific home construction and home pricing. Yes, home, home pricing will be in the RD50. Our price range will be about 250 to 350, and in the RS uh, RS72 will be about 325 to the, the $500,000 price point. Thank you, Mr. Sebeck. Uh, Trisha uh, Cameron has a follow-up question. Sure. Uh, she says she realizes, uh, uh, but she has a tree line behind her house and wants to know if that's going to stay. That's and then she, and then she just, I'm sorry, she just followed up. I brought my house for the trees on the back and now you're telling me that they're going to be gone? So if there are trees that are not on her property, I can't guarantee that they are going to stay. If they are on private property, um, that homeowner has the ability to remove them. Um, that's regardless of greenbelt status. So unless the trees are on her property, there is no guarantee that they will stay. And then Christina uh, wants to know what is a sanitary improvement district? A sanitary improvement district is a financing mechanism that's used by developers. So initially it's developed as a sanitary improvement district or an SID. Um, that's a development by which the developer um, uh, sanitary and improvement board uh, control the neighborhood. They can set a levy um, until such time the neighborhood is annexed by the city. It would be controlled by an SID board. And then the, the Trisha uh, Cameron had a follow-up. My husband wants to know how he buys those trees behind their house. <laughs> um, if they are not on your property, you would, you'd have to talk to the property owner in order to find that out. Okay. And then you also, you already asked about, you already answered why won't the tree stay? And yep, so we're good to go. Okay. And there, I, I don't, maybe Mr. Sudback can answer that more. Um, my guess is the trees are going to be removed. There are a couple of outlots that abut that southern portion of the property, but my guess is um, most of them on that property will probably be removed. I don't know if Mr. Sudback can weigh in on that. that that's correct. Quite a few of them will be removed for the ability to grade and shape the lots as we need them. 
we'll give a minute for more Facebook questions. I also see somebody on the call that's not part of the, I'm just making sure there's nobody on the call that's waiting to speak. Okay. The only other question we have was from uh, Christina, and she wants to know what, when you describe the SID, what does that mean in layperson's terms? <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Peterson, maybe you can help out if I'm not doing a very good job. So that entire area over at 48th and Capehart is currently an SID. Um, if Christina resides in one of those neighborhoods currently, she's she's living in an SID. Sanitary and improvement districts, although they are in the city's extraterritorial mm -hmm. jurisdiction, um, they are not part of the city limits. So they have their own um, ability to set a tax levy. Um, the streets are plowed by Sarpy County Public Works. Um, the Sheriff's Department would have jurisdiction um, over that area. So until such time that the city would annex that neighborhood, which will eventually happen, um, the Sanitary and Improvement Board is kind of the governing body for that neighborhood. So they control the finances, they control the tax levy, um, they're in charge of the financing for that subdivision. So um, the SID is really a, a financing mechanism for the developer. Again, if Mr. Peterson, if you have a better way to explain it or want to jump in, go ahead and feel free. Well, obviously a sanitary and improvement district is a political subdivision created by statute and it has to operate strictly according to statute and is also governed by the subdivision agreement that we enter into with the city of Bellevue. And uh, the strict guidelines are set out either by statute or according to the subdivision agreement. But it is a, a financing uh, vehicle. Uh, the subdivision agreement will require certain uh, levies, minimum levies, until we reach a certain uh, debt to value ratio and uh, as tammy pointed out at some point once the uh, development is pretty well completed it's anticipated it will then be annexed by the city and become a part of the city of bellevue thank you mr peterson so for anybody watching if, if you currently live in that area if you live in the neighborhood of um falcon point lions gates um, Cedar Grove, Bell Lago, Clearwater Falls, all of you folks currently live in a sanitary and improvement district. The only other question we have is from Trisha Cameron. Uh, she was wondering if the uh, property owner was here currently. I think he is on the phone. Okay. Um, but uh, maybe, uh, maybe Tammy, you want to maybe say how maybe she can contact you tomorrow and they could talk about whatever she wants to talk about. Sure. If if there's any other questions um, after tonight's meeting, uh, anybody can feel free to contact the planning department, um, can email me. My email's on the website. Our phone number's on the city website, which is www.bellevue.net. Um, again, I'll do my best to get those folks uh, answers and get them in touch with whoever they request. The last comment I have came from Christina, and she says, we want to keep our trees. <laughs> understood. Understood. Um, again, you know, if those are on someone else's property, legally, they have the right to take them down. So that's something that would have to be taken up with the property owner. All right. Yes, we'll give it a, just another few seconds to see if anything else is coming in on Facebook. Otherwise, we can close. Trisha Cameron also says, save the trees. <laughs> Got it. So noted. I see that somebody has jumped on the call. Jim, if they would like to, if they would like to speak for or against this item, please unmute yourself. State. Nope. Nothing else from Facebook then? No, nothing else on, from Facebook at this time, Mr. Chair. All right. At this time, I'm going to close the public hearing and open it up to the commissioners. Commissioners, what are your wishes? Mr. Chair, I have a question for staff, if I may. Yes. Uh, Ms. Palm, uh, the existing uh, Falcon Point neighborhood 
Um, was that any issues when that was developed from the city's point of view years ago, or was that pretty uh, straightforward project? You may have to clarify what you mean by issues, but my recollection was it was pretty straightforward. Um, not a lot of opposition at that time. I don't remember the vote before Planning Commission or City Council. Um, to my knowledge, it was recommended as approval from uh, Planning Commission and it was clearly approved by City Council. So um, I don't recall any major issues coming up at that time with that development. Thank you, Ms. Baum. Question for Tammy. Yes. On the 48th Street and Capehart, it's getting to be a busier intersection all the time. Obviously, this will be another 200 plus lots just south of there. I know we've got stoplights at 36 and Capehart, and I think the next set of stoplights is 72nd and Capehart. What would be the test, or I guess what's our standard for when we would consider installing a stoplight so that it makes it easier for people getting on and off 48th Street onto Capehart? Sure, and at this point it would not be the city standard, but rather the county. Um, it's the county's right away, it's their jurisdiction at that intersection. Um, this is an ongoing conversation with the Sarpy County Public Works Department. Um, they're aware of the traffic, they're obviously aware of the development that's occurring. Um, the engineers always look at certain warrants that need to be met before a stoplight can be put in. Um, things such as number of cars, accidents, um, all of those things factor into play as to, you know, what types of improvements are made at an intersection. Um, keep in mind the 72nd and Capehart stoplight just happens. That was just installed probably within the last 12 months. So I can't speak to at what point a stoplight will be put in at 48th and Capehart. But what I can say is that is definitely something that's on on the county's radar, and those are regular conversations that happen with the county and the city. Um, there's also, there we've talked in the past when developments have happened as far as timing and cost. So those conversations have happened. It's just difficult to nail down timing. Can I ask a question, staff? Yes. So uh, I, I live in Cedar Grove. I'm an SID uh, trustee for Cedar Grove. So uh, our SIDs talked with our lot of neighbors and it goes exactly with what Tom asked about. I just did the quick math. I've lived there about three years and in my three years, if you include this subdivision, we've platted uh, over a thousand lots from 48th and Capehart South. Almost all of those are on the west side of 48th Street except for Bell Lago. Um, that doesn't include Clearwater Falls at all. And I know that it's a county uh issue or county conversation but i want to understand the process to see if we can help with that tammy because i know in the application it said there was no map of data available and i would say even if there was data available it would be incorrect uh, because of the growth we've had there um your public works department didn't make any comments I, I would have thought they would have at least had some type of a we're aware of traffic we're working with the county that type of thing and then just personally, I can tell you, I've waited up to 17 minutes at that stop, at that at that corner trying to turn when I go to work in the morning, whether I go east or west. Um, and then lots aren't even full, right? And so I want Mr. Sedbeck and his team to know I support the application, but I just it's not his his to deal with. But we, I think we definitely need to uh, have a conversation. And I don't know if that's something that um, I know some other some other cities in Sarpy County they take the lead on street projects and and kind of push the county to help. And I don't know if we can do that. I know. Uh, that's something I think that we could help that development in that area. And there's more more to come. We know that there's land to the north that's been sold recently in that area. We have a multifamily on the corner there, the southeast corner coming. So it's great, it's great development. I love to see all the development, but just something if we can help push that. I know we had one comment from uh from Michelle on that. I took her name down. So um I know my neighbors have been asking me about it the last week and a half when this became public. And so I just want to make sure we at least have a conversation tonight about it. Yes, and like I said previously, those conversations are ongoing with the county. Um, you know, obviously they're aware of the development. They are part of these review requests. Um, clearly our public works, they understand the, the current existing conditions. Um, even though it is county right away, it will eventually have to be their decision to make um, unless 
its city right of way in the future. And obviously I would think a traffic light would be put in at that, that intersection long before it is city right of way. Um, but like I said, those conversations are definitely ongoing. Um, I, I understand the congestion during peak hours, but again, those public works departments, those engineers, they look at certain warrants. As soon as those are met, that traffic light will go in. If we can make that happen any quicker, I'm not sure, um, but we can definitely continue to have those conversations. So just for the public that's listening and asking questions, to who, direct them to who they should reach out to. Is that a county commissioner? Is that the county engineering department? Just I don't want to. I don't want to flood the city of Bellevue Public Works with this question, but I know it's going to come up. And so, if anybody's that would be yes, that would be a Sarpy County Public Works question. Um, if people want to reach out, that is the department I would suggest that people reach out to is the Sarpy County Engineer. Okay, thank you. Yes. This is Leo Jackson. Question for staff, if I might. Uh, Tammy, I have a question for you on terms of. Um, school service in this area I understand that this is probably Springfield is that correct correct and that uh, they had no comments on transportation in terms of busing into their uh, school district we did not receive any comments from Springfield Springfield however I would ask Mr. Sudbeck um, he has the ability to uh, make an agreement and have this become Bellevue Public Schools I don't know what his intention is in that regard um, Mr. Sudbeck do you want to speak to that at all yes we our intent would be is to try to get into the Bellevue Public School system for many reasons it seems like that's a better fit including transportation thank you Maybe, maybe I'll add on to that, going back to my traffic comment again, to Leland's point, I mean, all the kids down there, they all have to be bused to Leland's neighborhood in Lakewood Villages. There, there, is no, there is no elementary school down there, so all these kids are being bused uh, from Cedar Grove and Lionsgate and this subdivision, you know, through that same corner, 48th and Capehart, and having to go up to uh, Lakewood Villages to go to school. So um, just, just adding more kids and more buses there. Sure. I do know that the school district owns property in the Clearwater Falls subdivision. I don't know what their long-term plan is for it. I know initially it was for an elementary school, but I wouldn't be able to speak to if that has changed or not. I, I can speak to that. Uh, we do own land there. The district owns land there, uh, but there are, are no immediate plans to build a school there uh, based on the capacity of the existing schools. Uh, currently, it's uh, mentioned we do take kids into the Lakewood Villages, but we actually go uh, the back way and we don't go out to 36th Street just because of the time and, the, and now the construction on 36th Street. But you're absolutely right, getting out onto a K part is, is a nightmare. Small point of order for uh, staff, if I might. If, uh, this does indeed end up in the Bellevue School District, then will you request comments uh, even after whatever decision we make tonight or input into this? If Mr. Sudbeck uh, requests to be placed into the Bellevue Public School District at that time, they have to they have to accept that. Um, Mr. Sudbeck has to do the paperwork with them. So um, at that point, I would assume that they would review it. Okay, great, thanks. Just for the record, to um, Mr. Peterson and Mr. Sudbeck, could you uh, state your names and addresses just for the record? Yes, Robert F. Peterson, 14747 California Street, Suite 2, Omaha, Nebraska, 68154. And Melvin Sudbeck, 16255 Woodland Drive, Omaha, 68136. Thank you. There's no other feedback I can make a motion or comment. I would like to make a motion to uh, approve as requested. Now that the technical deficiencies have been uh, corrected, so just approve as requested. Second by Jacobson. All right, motion by Arnie, second by Jacobson. Uh, staff was that I know that earlier you made a note that the motion had to include a couple of items is that motion sufficient for moving forward 
I would just add that we probably want to include, uh, based upon conformance with the zoning ordinance, subdivision regulations, and conformance comprehensive plan. Mr. Arney, could you add those? Yep, I add those. That's good. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Motion by Arney, second by Jacobson. Okay. Vote, Mr. Casey. Yes. Mr. Perrin? Yes. Ms. Kane? And again, we can come back to you, Ms. Kane. Mr. Arney? <laughs> yes. Mr. Ritz? Yes. Mr. Ackley? Yes. Mr. Hankins? Yes. Ms. Cutsworth? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. All right, back to you, Ms. Kane. Yes. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yes, I'll vote it yes. Motion carried. This item will Thank go you. in front of the uh, City Council public hearing on Tuesday, February 2nd. Uh, staff, is there any additional current business we need to add? No current business at this time. Just want to wish everyone a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And thank you for making everything run smoothly tonight. Thanks to you guys for making it run smoothly. Yeah. I thank the mayor for joining us tonight. That doesn't happen very often, so that's kind of exciting. <laughs> I'm going to echo Tammy's comments. Have a Happy holidays, stay safe, stay warm. Merry Christmas. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. You need a formal vote to adjourn or is it just leave? I was gonna say a motion for adjournment if everyone just wants to raise their hand. Yes. Who would like to make the motion? I I'll make a motion. Adjourn. Motion by Jacobson, second by Hankins. All right. And I will mark you all as voting yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Have a good one, everyone. Have a good holiday, everyone. You yeah. too. Happy holidays. Thanks, everyone. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> Thanks for... Uh